Hi everybody, I'm Patrick from Rocky Mountain Style, and today we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm wearing right now, which is the Relwin Blanket Flannel. I picked up this flannel on a sale, a post-Christmas sale actually, from Huckberry's website. They stock a couple of these in a few different colors, and I'd been watching them a while, so I was happy to see that they went on sale after Christmas. That leads me into perhaps the elephant in the room here, and that is the price. At full retail, this is a $198 flannel. I understand that's not the most expensive flannel out there. There's lots of other varieties, uh, boutique manufacturers from Japan, things like that, where you could have a flannel be significantly more. However, $198 is quite a bit for a single shirt. Uh, so in this video, I'll try to do my best to tell you why I think it's actually worth $198 and perhaps you might pick one up yourself. The first reason why I think this flannel might be worth $198 to you is the fabric itself. Relwin uses a 310 gram per square meter fabric that works out to about 9.1 ounces per square yard. Generally speaking, ounces per square yard is the measure that you'll see when you're talking about the weight of fabrics, at least here in the States. Uh, that's generally how you see selvage denim, you see other shirts, things like that. So nine ounces, very thick, very substantial, and you can really feel it. That's going to keep you warm. Um, it's great as a layering piece, either under something heavier if it's really cold, or even as a top layer over a long sleeve shirt or a t-shirt if it's not super cold. Uh, in addition, Rowan also uses a three-ply construction. What that means is you have three yarns that are twisted together to make a single thread. So those yarns, since this is a yarn-dyed garment, those yarns are individually dyed and then twisted together. So you inherently, since you have three pieces of yarn twisted together to make the thread, it's going to be a lot more substantial. It's going to give you a lot more durability. A lot of less expensive flannels, a good example would be Eddie Bauer, uses a two-ply construction, just meaning it's not as thick, it's not as substantial, and the threads themselves are more prone to fraying, right? So, so the more yarns you have woven together or twisted together, you're going to have more tension. And once you weave them together into an actual fabric, they're going to lock in and really stay there. So three-ply, better than two-ply. Now, there's nothing wrong with an Eddie Bauer flannel, of course. I own several myself, so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with two-ply. It's just at a lower price point, you expect something like that. At a higher price point, you better see that three-ply construction. And here you do, so you know it's probably going to last a while. Reason number two is the construction. Reason number one, we had the fabric itself. Number two, construction. So if you're familiar with twill fabric and how it's woven, you have warp threads and weft threads, right? One goes vertical, one goes horizontally, and they're woven above and below each other to make that pattern that we normally see in denim and flannels where you kind of get that diagonal movement of the, of the, uh, the pattern itself. So Rowan uses a three by one, meaning you have uh, one thread pass under three of the other threads and then over as you go vertical and horizontal. So generally speaking, again, just like the, the uh, three ply yarn construction, the three by one twill weave is a, a denser and more durable weave. So something like this that you're paying this much money for, you want it to last for a long time, that's definitely something you want to see. And that's, that's not out of the realm of normalcy. Usually you see that on heavier gauge fabric. So again, selvage denim is a good example. Anything really thick is going to have that, that three by one weave. Uh, two by ones generally for lighter fabrics or, or denims that are you know, mass produced. If you go and buy you know, a $40 pair of jeans for Target is probably going to be a two by one. They're lighter, they're more breathable, you know, better for summer, that kind of thing. Uh, and then one by one, it's generally called a plain weave. That's actually what canvas is made from. And you think, well, canvas is generally pretty thick. Yeah, I think they start with just thicker yarns for a canvas. So one by one uh, still gets away with a really heavy, substantial feel for a canvas. But usually that plain weave you see with, with canvas fabrics and things like that. In addition to the weave of the fabric itself, you have to consider how the garment's actually put together. That's generally what you think when someone's talking about construction, right? So at the seams on this shirt, Relwin uses what's called felled seam construction. Now, again, that's not something that's out of the realm of what good garment makers do. However, at this price point, you definitely need to check that box. So you end up getting two pieces of fabric that are sort of interlocked with each other. 
and then sewn down from the top. So at the seams, you end up with four layers of fabric and at the stress points. So as you can imagine, that much fabric, that much stitching going through separate layers, it's really going to give you durability and it's going to give you a lot of resistance to ripping and tearing. I know for me with garments like this, if I'm just walking around the house, I may run into a uh, doorknob or something, get it caught in, caught in the buttons and you know maybe caught in the sleeve and pull it. I've ripped shirts that way. I'm, I'm very clumsy, my wife will tell you. Uh, but with this kind of construction, you're going to avoid that most of the time. And so, of course, at this price point, that's something you want to see. So good job, Rowan. The third reason why I think this shirt is worth the money is the design. Now, I do understand design, fashion, style, all that's subjective by nature, right? However, most of the people buying a flannel are buying it because of the pattern, the plaid pattern, right? So generally speaking, the more colors you have, the pattern gets a little more intricate. However, it's tough to match and you know, not clash several colors all at once. So you have to be careful when you're overloading with color, the designers need to be cognizant of the fact that those colors need to work well together and still let you wear the shirt and match other things, right? So this particular shirt has five different colors. You have two different reds, you have blue, white, and yellow, exactly. So <laughs> I think the inspiration for this probably was Optimus Prime, as you saw in the thumbnail. Uh, the yellow is interesting, though. If you look at this shirt from afar, or even in some of these stock photos here, you don't really see the yellow. It kind of just looks like red, white, and blue, right? That's why I think it's kind of interesting. You get closer, you look at it, that yellow pops in, really gives a lot of visual interest to the shirt itself. If you look at some cheaper options, Eddie Bauer, again, I'll bring up sort of as a mid-tier option. Their shirts retail, I don't know, between say $75 and $90 for their flannels. Usually they top out at four colors. Some might only have three. If you want to look at the bottom of the barrel, Amazon Essentials, and I actually have bought one of these before. It's too big for me now. But uh, a lot of theirs only have two colors and generally seem to top out at three. So when you look at one, even if it's, say, even if it's well made for the price, when you look at it, there's just not that visual interest that really, you know, most people are looking for when they're picking out clothes in this price bracket. Two other things that may be less important to you, however, one of them I like a lot and the other is just kind of neat. Um, this has collar stays, or I guess it, it more, more accurately, it has uh, slots for collar stays. I absolutely hate when my collars curl, I have to iron them down every time I wash them or even halfway through the day, they start to curl. I just don't like it. It doesn't look nice and it bugs me. So a lot of times I will not buy a shirt unless it has collar stays. This was an actual exception to that. I bought this just because I like the pattern so much. I didn't even realize it had collar stays until I got the shirt in and I was absolutely thrilled. I haven't owned any other flannels that have collar stays. So, so Relwin made a winner for me with that. Also, the tag, this is by far the least important, but look at this tag. The cord on this tag is nicer than some shoelaces I've seen on some shoes. So I generally tend to think that uh, if you show quality in the small bits, there's generally quality in the big bits as well. Some may say, oh, they just wasted money on this cord so they could jack the price up. Perhaps, but again, attention to detail in my mind is always a good thing. And now that we've gone through those three reasons why I think this shirt is worth the money, it's really up for you to decide. If flannels aren't really your thing and you just wear one every once in a while when it's cold outside or when you want to have sort of a lumberjack aesthetic, you probably don't need to spend almost 200 bucks on a flannel. However, if you want a shirt that due to the construction, due to the quality materials, it's probably going to last you a really long time and you want to have a shirt that evokes some visual interest with their you know, playing of colors like they have here, and in some of their other styles and other colors, then I think you should really check this out and consider it. If $198 is still too much, I encourage you just put this in, uh, you know, bookmark the page, check it every once in a while, try to find a sale. Maybe as the weather warms up, some of these heavier garments will go on sale and maybe try to pick one up and keep it for next year. That's what I plan on doing, trying to pick up one more color if I can find one on a decent sale. However, I've got uh, some looks here I want to show you before we wrap this video up. The first one here is a medium brown boot. These are the Thursday Captains, along with a dark denim. I think it's a pretty nice look. Next one we have here, these are the Taylor Stitch Trench Boots in golden brown wax suede with a lighter denim. 
Again, I think this is pretty cool. And the golden brown wax suede goes nicely with the yellow in the shirt. I think they kind of play off each other. In the next one here, we have a sneaker option. These are the, uh, actually the ones I'm wearing here. These are greats, uh, the Royale with the gum sole, white leather gum sole, uh, the Royale from greats. I think that's a great option as well with the light denim. And then finally, we have uh, my newest pair of boots, the wingtip boot from Thursday in color number 77. Really cool color. I got these for Christmas from my wife with a corduroy. That's the 365 pant from Huckberry in brown with the flannel. And if you want to dress up a little bit, go business casual in a cold climate. I think this is a killer outfit. If you made it this far in the video, I want to just say thanks again for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, drop a comment below. Tell me if you think this is worth $198 or if no flannel is worth $198. Uh, and also consider subscribing. It really helps. And once we hit 250 subscribers on the channel, we're going to do a giveaway. Something from Huckberry from their Flint and Tinder line. I'm a big fan. Not sponsored by Huckberry at all. However, uh, I think it'd be cool to give back once we hit 250. And if you like that, you'll want to hang around a while with the channel, grow this community, see what we give away at 1,000. And then, hey, if we ever hit 10,000 or 100,000, know, maybe we're giving away Rolexes or something like that. It'd be pretty cool, right? We'll see. Thanks a lot.